Hello all and welcome back to another Doctor Who product review. In today's review I'm going to be taking a look at the most recent Doctor Who release from the Demon Music Group. This time around another 1960s missing Doctor Who serial that has been released in the vinyl record format for the first ever time. This time around the 1967 second Doctor story, The Abominable Snowmen, featuring the debut of the infamous Yeti, who are of course controlled by the Great Intelligence as a part of the original BBC TV soundtrack series. Now, of course, previously in this series, I have already reviewed The Evil of the Daleks and The Daleks Master Plan, both, as the titles suggest, do, of course, feature Daleks. Therefore, this story is very different to all of those episodes because it is not a Dalek story, so I was very excited to see Demon Music Group, in fact, expand out to feature another 60s story to go alongside Galaxy 4 that doesn't feature some of Doctor Who's most infamous villains, being either the Daleks or the Cybermen. And I think that the display of this set alone is incredibly visually striking and certainly stands out a lot from the previous releases. If you are someone who has watched my previous reviews of the Daleks Master Plan and Evil of the Daleks, this review is in fact going to follow a very similar format to those reviews, where it is going to be a two-in-one. In the first part, I'm going to be taking a look at the rather lovely looking product itself, and then in the second part of this review, I'm going to be taking a look at the actual story in the episode review format. Much like Evil of the Daleks and the Daleks Master Plan, this product has been released in fact in two different formats. The first of which is a standard edition that is printed on a rather nice white vinyl with no patterning on whatsoever. And it is available from Amazon, Zoom and a number of other different retailers. And the second version, much like the previous releases, is in fact an Amazon exclusive version. This time round limited edition to 500 units and does in fact feature a Tibetan blizzard pattern printed on clear vinyl with a blue splatter effect added over the top. In this review I'm in fact going to be taking a look at the standard edition which is available from a number of different retailers. The recommended retail for this product is £51.99 therefore it is a little bit cheaper than the previous vinyl records released as a part of this series as this time round this collector set only features three records as opposed to the previous releases featuring six or more. So if you are a fan of the Abominable Snowmen and have previously bought the CD original television soundtrack, to be honest, if you have a record player, I would certainly recommend buying this product because the display of the product alone in this lovely collector's case is certainly worth purchasing. So where not best to start off this review by taking a look at the cover art itself. Now once again Daniel Ascom and Ellie Fennell have done an absolutely brilliant job on this release. Really I see breathing new life into a 1960s Doctor Who serial. What I absolutely love about these different designs that we've seen throughout this series is when you look incredibly closely the shapes and colours that have been used are incredibly cartoony in their design. However when you look at the image as a whole it looks much more complex and features lots of really nice details. So as you can see, starting off at the very top, we have the new series Jodie Whittaker, 13th Doctor logo. This time around, it has been given a really lovely silver embossing, which makes it stand out quite a lot on the blue and white background with the snow blizzard around it. Along the top of this, we do, of course, have the black version of the BBC logo. And then just below this, we have the abominable snowmen, once again, in a black typeface. Track all the previous releases, we do have the inclusion of a small slogan there, at the very bottom, which states that this is an original BBC TV soundtrack. And as for the rest of the cover itself, this is absolutely beautiful. Of course, at the very top, we do have this really lovely looking icy cold sky design. We have a series of different snowflakes almost going down onto the mountain. The really nice layout there of the Himalayas in the background. Of course, the main central image for this cover art is none other than the Yeti itself. Simplistic design, where you pretty much just have a silhouette with a little bit of detail around the sides there. I love the way the only pieces of detail that we see around the sides of the Yeti itself, being the fur almost standing on end, has been given this blue and white highlight. It stands out really well on the actual background, but also at the same time kind of makes me think of the Andrew Skilleter target novelization cover art for this story, using a very similar design along with the background itself, almost having a blue filter added over the top. I think it looks incredibly cool and almost very chill 
feeling at the same time. I really love the way that the actual face itself has been shrouded by a darker colour. You just have the ominous glows of the light of the eyes emanating out from there. It's on the background of the Himalayas, a really lovely touch is the Det Sen Monastery, which is of course the main location setting of the episode itself, that has been really nicely recreated on the side of the mountain face. And then, of course, along the side of the Yeti, we do also have the inclusion of these rather Christmassy looking trees coated in snow, making the entire artwork almost look like a Christmas card, just with a massive scary creature in the very middle, as opposed to Santa. Much like all of the previous record sets released as a part of this series, of course the artwork is consistent onto the back as well, using exactly the same colour scheme. And much like the previous releases within this series, we do have the inclusion of the TARDIS exterior, in a very similar design to the other releases as well. Once again, we have the continuation of the Himalayas backdrop, along with the inclusion of a number of tents around the side, and a rather lovely looking snowy landscape. And of course, you have the TARDIS exterior, which isn't as battered and as damaged as the one seen within the actual story itself. However, it's still a nice touch, with a little bit of coating of snow added over the top. Along the bottom of this, there is also an additional bit of company information printed, as well as stating that this episode features Patrick Troughton as the second Doctor. The episode has been written by Mervyn Hazeman and Henry Lincoln, and it features linking narration by Fraser Hines, who does of course play the second Doctor companion of Jamie McCrimmon. Much like Master Plan and Evil of the Daleks, as per usual the case of the box has been made out of a really high quality cardboard, ensuring that the records on the inside of the box are of course protected when this product is in storage. Due to the Abominable Snowmen being a six part episode, this time around this set only features three records, therefore the box itself is in fact rather slim compared to the previous versions. And it is also worth noting that unlike with Evil of the Daleks and the Daleks Master Plan, they did of course feature a record with an etched vinyl on one side. This time round, all three of the records within this set have episode material on all of the sides in order to cater for the six episodes. And also to be consistent with the previous records within this series, it does also feature the BBC and Doctor Who logos along the spine, along with the Abominable Snowman title. The lid of the box has once again been made out of high quality sturdy cardboard, and all of the records on the inside of the case have been nicely piled up. Following the theme of all of the previous Demon Music Group Who vinyl series releases, we do of course have the continuation of the Doctor Who Vortex in the very middle, once again with this comic-y simplistic design, inspired by the colour palette that is used on the front of the box. So this time round, the rather vibrant orange and reds seen on the Evil and Master Plan releases have been replaced by this rather cold blue and white chilling design with of course the light emanating once again from the very middle. The first thing that you see on the inside of the box is this piece of paper once again featuring a design that I will be covering in a little bit and we do also have the entirety of the cast of this story printed in the very middle. At the very top of this you do also have the inclusion of it has been written by and it was first broadcast on BBC One between the 30th of September and the 4th of November 1967. And then at the opposite side we do get a few additional credits for the people who worked on the original TV soundtrack for this episode including some audio restoration from Mark Ayres, as well as a few people who worked on this release. And then of course under this, moving that to the side, we have the inclusion of all of the vinyls within this set, following exactly the same design to all of the previous vinyls released as a part of this series. So once again we have this design printed all the way throughout, and we have a real cardboard sleeve that has been added over the top. Now this has been made of a more high quality bit of cardboard to protect the vinyl once again on the inside of the sleeve. And then under this we have the actual sleeve itself, once again printed with our usual Vortex and TARDIS design. And then and on the back of this we get your usual information that is normally printed, including what number LP it is, as well as what episodes are featured on this release. So for example, due to this being LP1, we have Side A featuring episode 1, which was broadcast on the 30th of September 1967, and then on Side B you have episode 2, broadcast on the 7th of October 1967. As I did mention earlier, on the inside of this sleeve, we do have the vinyl record itself. Now this time round I am of course reviewing the standard 
standard vinyl record version, therefore we don't really have too much to talk about this time. Normally in these reviews, I do normally recommend getting the exclusive version, simply because it normally looks a bit more visually appealing or more visually exciting. However, I do also state that at the end of the day, it is only just a colour and the actual material on the record itself is exactly the same, so you're not really missing out on much. So I think that if you are more interested in those more detailed vinyls, then by all means get the Tibetan Blizzard version. However, I think there's something with this release, I think especially because it is just a solid white as opposed to just another colour, I think there's something about a white record that makes it stand out a lot, especially when you have the cover art for this release also looking rather clinical and white. It's nice and consistent and rather satisfying to look at. So yeah, if you get the opportunity to buy this version, for example if the limited edition one sells out, then by all means this product isn't bad or anything like that, it's still equally just as nice and quite satisfying. For ease of listening, DMG have also featured some numbers on the side of the sleeves of the records themselves, so you can put these back in order once you have finished listening to the story itself, which is incredibly helpful as I found out when listening to the Daleks Master Plan. However, for smaller stories such as this one, it's not necessarily much of a big deal, but it is still nice that they have featured them, just to make it easier to flick through each record within this set, and to also ensure that you've got them in order. And removing all of the records from the case does of course reveal yet another swirly vortex underneath. If you place all of the vinyl record sleeves on the floor in a particular order, it does reveal this rather interesting image of one of the Yeti control spheres with the lovely reflection of the Himalayas in the background, once again with a nice snow blizzard design added over the top. And I particularly love the silhouettes of the Yetis here almost lurking through the snow. It's incredibly cool and incredibly ominous. I almost imagine this being the poster reveal of the animation coming in, say, 2022 or something like that. It looks incredibly cool. I absolutely love it. I would actually go as far to say, I think that this is possibly my favourite layout image of what they've created so far on the sleeves of this series. And then, of course, as per usual, flipping this around to the opposite side, we have another rather intriguing piece of cover art, a rather similar concept to the other one, where you have the snow blizzard there lurking in the background. However, this time around, it's from the perspective of a cave. So we have a silhouette of the Yeti walking towards the cave, and then we have the Yeti control spheres with the ominous glow coming from them, and then lighting up the rest of the icicles on top of the cave walls and ceiling, which is really lovely, really cool, very cinematic once again, and I like the absence of the TARDIS exterior box that we've seen on the Master Plan releases and Evil of the Daleks releases. It makes these sleeves stand out a little bit more from the other versions, and to be honest, after releasing this set, I would absolutely love to see the uh, Web of Fear released as well at some point, considering that the actual vinyl record itself is spherical, very much like the tube tunnel, very much like the underground logo. I think they can certainly do something with that that would look very cool within the record record format. I could imagine this being an underground tube station or something with a yeti lurking in the shadows. So yeah, please Demon Music Group, release the Web of Fear next. The Abominable Snowman, written by Mervyn Hazeman and Henry Lincoln, a six-part serial featuring the debut of both the Yeti and the Great Intelligence. With only episode two remaining complete within the TV archive, The Abominable Snowman is one of many set lost within the mists of time. I've always loved the concept of the Yeti within Doctor Who. They are without a doubt one of the best creatures created from the 60s era of the show, striking a great balance between real-life stories and the Doctor Who universe. This series nicely plays with this idea, with Professor Travers on a mission to track down the real-life Yeti, to later find the robot versions created by the Great Intelligence. In this review, I decided to do something slightly different to usual. Firstly, I listened to the original TV soundtrack with the linking narration from Fraser Hines on the vinyl record reviewed previously throughout this video. I then accompanied this with a loose cannon reconstruction for a visual aid, and then after experiencing the story with audio narration, I then went on to read the target novelisation as adapted by Terence Dix.
I think that the beauty of the target novelisations is that it suspends your belief of classic series Doctor Who, and with the imagination, you can basically make this story visually whatever you want it to be. And as much as I do love classic series Doctor Who, there are a few episodes, undeniably, that do look crap, and more than often, that can be within the 60s. And I think that some episodes do maybe fall because of that. I imagine that if the Macro Terra existed within its entirety, for example, it would be an incredibly dull story. So simply because a lot of the sets look rather basic, and undeniably the animation makes that story probably better than what it would be if the actual one existed. And the great thing about the Abominable Snowmen, along with a lot of the target novelizations, is that it gets rid of a lot of those clunky scenes that basically don't work too well, and are simply just there to remind the viewer what is going on within the previous story. So as an episode itself, as a story overall with actual characters, target novelization does flow a lot better, and generally give you a lot more better ideas about the characters that you meet along the way, for example, such as Travers, giving him a little bit of a backstory, but also at the same time getting into the head of both the Doctor, Jamie and Victoria, which is something of which that isn't seen as much within classic series Doctor Who within the televised stories. So I think more than anything, I recommend actually picking up some of the target novelizations, especially if you want to experience the missing episodes. I highly recommend listening to the original TV soundtrack, be it if it's on vinyl or if it's just CD versions that are available within the collections that are currently being re-released. But at the same time, if you want to have additional knowledge and experience of the story, of how it was intended almost to be experienced, then certainly, without a doubt, read the target novelizations. I think that in particular, when it comes to the Abominable Snowman, it is very good at visualising the Himalayas and the general location of the Death Zen Monastery. There is this lovely moment where you have the Second Doctor and Jamie walking up to the TARDIS across the Himalayas as the sun kind of rises in the very early morning, and that would look beautiful in animation if the day does ever come to see this story animated. But I think that this story just generally is a nice one to in fact read. It's a good easy read as well, nothing too complex, and it's just a nice experience overall. I love that the Abominable Snowmen plays with the idea of belief. It's not just an Earth invasion story with aliens. Because of the terror and scaremongering attached to the Yeti creatures already, at first it presents the story as if the Yeti were real, and the story of the monster lurking within the hills of the Himalayas are in fact true. And we see the monks within the Detson Monastery react to this, and then it's later uncovered that the Yeti are in fact simply robots powered by the Great Intelligence. Unusually, one of the things that I don't like as much about the Abominable Snowman as a serial overall is actually the Great Intelligence himself. Within the TV serial, he's portrayed as this all-powerful, mysterious force from another dimension that has been sent to our own, harbouring the body of Padma Sambhavar, the leader of the monks in the Death Zen Monastery. However, from there onwards, we learn very little else, so it would have been nice to see his character developed further. I find it unusual that out of the Yeti and the Great Intelligence, the Great Intelligence himself is the one to make the return with the new series Doctor Who, as I think that the Yeti were so much better visually and as a threat. I think that perhaps the Web of Fear picks up on this, using the Yeti more as a focus within the next serial that they appear within the year later. I think that the relationship once again between the Doctor and Jamie is rather nice and focused upon throughout this story. I think that once again within the later half you really see their relationship and the strengths of it because you have the Doctor who is a lot more of a warm character who basically just wants to help people out and solve problems and then you have Jamie that is slowly coming to understand the ideas of the Doctor and that not everything can be solved through knives and violence. You have him kind of being changed by the Doctor's approach and he kind of becomes in a where the Doctor's bodyguard, he's kind of a more gruff version of the Doctor that acts in a very similar way to him, but he's changing over time to kind of suit the preferences and the beliefs of the Doctor, which is possibly why they get along so well, because Jamie is basically the more violent version of him. And I think that this episode, especially listen to the television soundtrack, you can understand just in the way that they talk to each other, it is a very respecting relationship, and that is once again conveyed really nicely throughout the actual target novelization. Victoria, however, doesn't really have too much to do. Once again, she kind of gets taken over in the story. Of course, we had an Evil of the Daleks, her debut episode, her also being taken over, or her mind was kind of uh, used by the Daleks. 
And then in this story, we kind of have a similar thing, however, to a lesser extent, where we have Padma Sambhavar taking over her mind, or the Great Intelligence, I suppose, taking over her mind, and she's a bit brain dead because of that. She just wants to leave the monastery. And other than that, she's kind of a character that floats around, doesn't particularly have too much to do. I suppose she's still a nice member of the TARDIS team, but at this point within classic series Doctor Who, we don't really get too much development for those female characters, which is a shame. I think that Travers is also a very nice character. It is nice to have somebody throughout the story that goes on a rather nice journey. To start off with, he ends up betraying the Doctor because he believes that he is another member of an expedition that is trying to track down the Yeti and basically disrupt what he is doing. And then throughout the duration, we kind of have him becoming an extended member of the TARDIS team, which I quite like. And at the very end of the episode, I think that it's still clear that he's very different to the Doctor, but he does help out at the same time time which I do appreciate. And generally overall he was an enjoyable character, very much like how you have throughout the Web of Fear and other stories such as Evil of the Daleks. You have these people that come in as the supporting characters that really make the episode stand out so you don't just have the TARDIS team as the main focus but this episode does genuinely feel like it is set within the Himalayas. It feels like you are a part of this very secluded society within the monastery that is all about peace and all about belief and generally everybody getting along and that is slowly throughout the story's premise being destroyed by the Yeti who are living up within the mountains rather menacingly lurking over them waiting to attack. I love the Abominable Snowman for what it is, and if I had the choice of seven episode in its entirety from the missing stories, this serial would most likely be the one that I would choose. It's a breath of fresh air more than anything. I love the blend between the studio footage and the location footage portraying the Himalayas. As from what does exist on location, it looks really cool and effective. It is also a welcome departure from the 100% studio-bound 60s Who stories. And the Yeti also look great, if a little bit cute and cuddly at times. But I also love that they have the potential to rip your head off simultaneously. They are menacing and threatening. I would love to see them make a return under a good writer. I think that over the past year, from listening to The Abominable Snowmen, from listening to Evil of the Daleks as well, I've got to appreciate the second Doctor a little bit more. Of course, recently, over the past few years, we've also had the animations of Power of the Daleks, the Macra Terror. Soon we're also going to have the faceless ones, as well as the Fury of the Deep. So very quickly, we are get getting a more padded out variation of the Second Doctor era. And previously, not had many of the episodes existing within their entirety, and the rest of them only existing within the audio format. I think that it does nicely show that his Doctor has a journey throughout his era, and more than anything, he's arguably one of the most new series incarnations of the Doctor within classic series Doctor Who. He does have the traits of the 11th Doctor, but also at the same time you really get the sense of him being an all good character because he just wants to help people and get along, but also he's a problem solver. It is without a doubt that the second Doctor is very intelligent. He does use a few mind games throughout this story to kind of coax Victoria out of her hypnotized state, and I like that because he's almost once again like a mysterious wizard where you don't quite know everything about him. He's mysterious, but he still is your friend and he'll help you out when you need it. 60s Who often feels clunky in plot, needing to repeat its narrative on a fairly regular basis to remind the viewer what is exactly going on. I think that this story isn't affected by that as much, and it is much easier to watch and listen compared to that of other 60s serials. And the target novelisation is an absolutely cracking read for sure, which I highly recommend reading if you haven't already. If this episode isn't returned to the archive anytime soon, I would love to see it animated using the modern approach of the currently animated stories that we have seen in recent years. This will breathe even more life into the Himalayas location, as well as making the Yeti look even cooler and even more menacing and evil. I just love them as a monster because they are so... In a way, I think they do look quite effective. I think that they don't look like a guy in a costume. I think that obviously they are a guy in a costume, but they have something about them where you can kind of suspend your belief and believe that they are a creature 
or a robot that is being controlled by this powerful source above. And I think that for the time, this certainly worked very well. And I think that out of the tomb, compared to what we've seen within the Web of Fear as well, I think that these Yeti especially work within the black and white format because they look even darker and more mysterious when they are within the caves and things like that. And also, of course, the iconic scenes within the Web of Fear of them lurking along the underground tunnels. It looks very cool. So yeah, it would be great to see the Yeti return with a new series Doctor Who, have a writer behind them that is actually good and kind of respects the history and wants to develop the Yeti further as opposed to kind of reboot them. I think that they would have to look very similar to what we got within classic series Doctor Who because then you kind of take away from the effect that they have. You can't really change the Yeti too much because they are just the Yeti. They are iconic for what they are and they look really cool because of it. And that overall is The Abominable Snowmen, and I thoroughly enjoyed it. For some reason, I've always had an attachment to the Yeti. Having not even experienced the stories, I just loved the concept of them. And having now experienced The Abominable Snowmen in full, both the target novelization as well as the original TV soundtrack, I grew my appreciation of the Yeti even further because they are incredibly cool monsters, a brilliant concept, and the great intelligence is promising. However, at this point, considering that he did a false return, with a new series Doctor Who, I was kind of expecting him to have more of a impact than he actually did within the story. I love the idea of him harbouring the body of Padma Sambafar. I thought that was incredibly dark and showing kind of how much power he did in fact have, considering that Padma Sambavar as a person was incredibly innocent and the polar opposite of the great intelligence being evil. And I liked that throughout the story. I liked that the Doctor knew Padma Sambavar beforehand. It was a nice pre-existing relationship and kind of shown how the great intelligence has taken over for the worst. So yeah, I certainly recommend if you have the opportunity, definitely listen to the Abominable Snowmen or watch the Loose Cannon reconstruction or maybe even if you have the target novelization, read the book because that is also a really nice read as well and is a nice representation of the story. And whilst actually reading the book, I could imagine the telly snaps in my head and I visualized the story pretty well from what actually occurred. So if you just want to experience this story in the most accurate way possible than the telesnap version. However, the book itself is also a good read and is pretty reliable to what we actually got to see on screen from what we can tell at least at this point from the episode not existing visually in its entirety. As for the actual vinyl record itself, of course that is up to you. I would probably recommend if you like the Abominable Snowmen or like the Yeti then and you want to buy the vinyl version then definitely go ahead buy it. However, if you're somebody who is a little bit cautious around 60s Doctor Who then maybe forking out 50 quid for the vinyl collector set wouldn't be something think for you, maybe get the CD version or the vinyl record, but I think that the actual vinyl itself is a really lovely presentation and if you have the money it's definitely worth the opportunity, either versions, either the standard one or the Amazon exclusive one, both of which are just as nice. So overall, for the Doctor Who Demon Music Group, the Abominable Snowmen Vinyl LP Collector Set, I think that this is another worthy addition to the Vinyl Who Collection, and it is certainly one of which that will be appealing to the more dedicated Doctor Who Classic Series fans, as opposed to that of a regular Doctor Who fan who delves into the Classic Series on a occasion. I think that due to this episode being a missing Doctor Who serial, it has something about it that makes it feel more special to a story that exists within the TV archive. Of course, the only other way of experiencing this story is either through a loose con reconstruction or the other CD original TV soundtrack that does, of course, already exist that you can, of course, purchase. Therefore, there isn't a definitive version of this story as of yet. And I think that for now, whilst this episode remains unanimated, I think that this is kind of the definitive product for you to buy that represents this story. I think that the Yeti as a whole is a brilliant and intriguing monster and certainly one of the best from the classic series. If you are a fan of the story and have experienced it on other occasions before and have thoroughly enjoyed it then I certainly recommend buying this product because it is a really lovely way to celebrate the story and on the other hand if you are a fan of generally Doctor Who vinyls as a whole then I also recommend buying this product and on the other hand if you are a fan or dedicated Doctor Who record collector then this is also a product that I recommend adding to your collection because the actual quality of the product is really nice, the artwork itself is visually striking and beautiful, and the vinyl records themselves are also a rather nice vibrant white colour.
And of course, the added bonus is that due to this set only featuring three records, it is also a little bit cheaper than the previous records within this series, being £51.99 at recommended retail. However, as per usual, this price may fluctuate. So thank you for watching this review. I hope you have enjoyed it. If you have any questions about this product or Doctor Who records as a whole, please do feel free to leave them in the comments section below. And I will, of course, reply to them at some point in the near future. And also, on a related note, if you are a fan of Doctor Who records as a whole, recently I have also uploaded a Doctor Who record collection video, which I do recommend checking out if you are a fan of Doctor Who vinyls. Thank you once again for watching. Have a nice day. I shall see you all next time for more more Doctor Who content every single week. Bye for now.